Hi, my name is Michal Hrušecký and I work at CZNIC on Project Tourist. What I would like to talk about today is uh, what uh, we did in the last year, what we are working on right now, and what are our plans for the future. Let's start with some history and some introduction of the project. We started in uh, 2013 as a research project of CZNIC. We started with a hardware security probe that we gave away to people in Czech Republic and we were investigating uh, how much are those people attacked. Those probes were by accident also really cool router and as we do with everything in CZNIC we did them open source we put in a Linux distribution based on OpenWRT and we did everything as we thought that uh, it should be done. So we gave people root accounts, we provided automatic updates and such. Uh, those routers from 2013 are still alive and one of the news that I want to actually talk about is uh, during the whole last year, we were polishing our migration from Tourist OS uh, 3. Point something to our latest release, uh, Tourist OS 5.2.3 right now. Uh, this took us a lot of work and uh, we ran into one issue. Those old routers from 2013 uh, no longer have enough storage to support everything and uh, they, if you have some additional packages you can't uh, reinstall the whole system on the flash memory that they have. Therefore we have to come up with some clever ideas how to extend the storage so we wouldn't uh, force people using those to abandon them. One solution actually came from a hackathon that we organized and that was uh, putting a system on a micro SD card in the slot that is actually already part of those old routers. And other solution is something that we were polishing uh, basically because we want to discontinue to his OS 3. And because we want to discontinue it, we want to provide people an easy option to migrate to new system. We think that uh, plugging in a USB flash drive should be easy enough to convince people to migrate. Now let's take a look at how it's done. This is Twist One Dot routers that we produced. The difference between this one and 1.0 is for example USB 3 port up front, but in general they were almost the same. Now if we want to use uh, ButterFS and extend our internal storage, we can do it in multiple ways. The easiest one is just to plug in an ordinary USB drive in the back and be done with it use the newer version of the script that we are about to release. Slightly different option that is already available for some time is to use internal micro SD card slot. For that we would need to first undo several screws that I already took away and uh, open up the top cover and now we need to unplug the RAM and beneath it we can see hidden micro SD card slot we just put micro SD card inside Replace the RAM
and add back the cover. Now you need to just uh, run the script that is already part of the distribution and uh, you can migrate to ButterFS, use all the new features and you have nothing sticking out from your router and you have both USB slots free for additional now that was the hardware part now after that you need to run a script on your router to migrate everything it will take a long time uh, with uh, some cheap flash drive well cheap it was free I got it on some conference it took me half an hour to migrate uh, to a uh, 1.1 but uh, in the end it rebooted and started working again but uh, during the process I had to be patient and I started to disbelieve that it will actually work the migration can take quite a while but be patient during that time you might lose the internet connection you might lose uh, Wi-Fi and it might even start blinking weirdly because uh, reinstallation of uh, LED drivers and control but in the end it should succeed and get you up and running that's how we took care of uh, our oldest routers for uh, Omnia that was our first commercially available router we uh, put uh, an option into our forest interface and you just with few clicks can enable automatic migration and it will migrate you to the newer version of OS again it may take a while and uh, during the migration your network might go down but uh, it should succeed in most cases what we were doing in the last year was uh, handing down various corner cases and uh, typical network uh, setup should work all the time you might lose some of the obsolete packages that were part of Twist OS 3 and are no longer available in Twist OS 5 so after migration check that all your services are there up and running and fully working Speaking of releases, uh, we did few of them in uh, the last year and one of them is about to happen. It should be in uh, RC stage right now. This video is pre-recorded, so I know that we plan next week to release the first RC of 5.3 and if everything goes to the plan it should be out now when you are watching it and uh, those releases were mainly focused on Twist Sentinel our security research program that we are still running and using and uh, I will actually not talk about that because my colleagues have separate talk in this conference that is uh, targeting uh, just Twist Sentinel and all the new features apart from that uh, what is uh, going to happen hopefully by end of the year is uh, Twist OS 6 as you might know we are based on OpenWRT and Twist OS 5 is based on OpenWRT 1907 and uh, recently in September, OpenWRT released their new official stable release 21.02. We are going to rebase on top of that and release Twist OS 6 based on that, but we still have uh, some rough edges to polish. For example, one of the important changes that happened there is. Uh, decoupling of the network configuration into second and third layer so the configuration changed quite a lot 
we have to take care of migration again, this time from Twist OS 5 to Twist OS 6. And on top of that, we need to update our user interface to allow people to configure stuff correctly in Twist OS 6. Speaking of user interface, in Twist OS 6, we are actually going to deprecate our user interface voice in favor of a new re-implementation called Refoys. It is already available nowadays in Twist OS 5 and it is actually not missing much of the functionality from Forest. One of the last things that uh, we were figuring out how to replace was Pacorn that was uh, integrated in Foris. It's uh, our internal network monitoring tool. And we actually decided to split it up into separate application. So starting from Twist OS 6, you will have it uh, as separate application from Reforis. This will allow us to make UI in the future fancier. We wouldn't be limited by uh, Reforis design and we, we will be able to go nuts with that. Speaking of software, we are also planning new features. One of the cool features that I'm excited about is uh, some proof of concept of uh, integration of IDS solution. IDS uh, stands for Intrusion Detection System. <coughs> and what those systems do is basically that they do deep packet inspection on all the traffic that is going through your network and they are looking for suspicious uh, content. Sometimes it might be a known uh, user agent, sometimes it might be suspicious query and uh, what, what they are looking for are either viruses, to run horses, malwares or sometimes it can even look for policy violations and such. Our initial implementation will be really simple. We will just allow you to enable it and uh, it will show up some notifications on your screen but we will improve over the time. Let's now switch to hardware we are producing the hardware after all. So what news do I have about the hardware? In the last year we tried several 5G cards, some Wi-Fi 6 cards and uh, we were also thinking about what new hardware could we produce. What can I tell you about the results? Regarding 5G cards uh, we found some that are working in USB mode the advantage is that Twist Omnia actually have only USB 2 internal slot. So if you put 5G card in Twist Omnia, you are limited to USB 2 speeds. And uh, other disadvantage is that uh, we haven't found really reliable ones but uh, that might be overcome with uh, kernel updates and more testing and more polishing. But uh, the more important part is that uh, all the cards that we found were 300 uh, US dollars and more. So not really cheap. Regarding Wi-Fi 6, uh, news are a little bit brighter. Um, we tried several cards and again quite some of them didn't work but in the end uh, we managed to get uh, one card uh, with a MediaTek chipset that is Wi-Fi 6 and actually works and uh, we are now trying to get uh, all the 
necessary paperwork done, all the certifications and stuff. So we are sure that uh, we can recommend it. And uh, hopefully once we get through all the testing, we will start, uh, we will start uh, recommending them and probably we will come up with some upgrade pack for Twist Omnia and uh, probably for other routers as well. But uh, Twist Omnia is uh, here for a while with us already. So are we planning some refreshment? Of course we are. Um, we are currently working on design of Omnia 2. This is uh, currently code name. It can change, and uh, we don't have anything set in stone yet. But uh, we already have some pretty concrete ideas about uh, what it should look like. What we expect that it will be is 64-bit uh, ARM CPU. It should be running at 2 GHz. It should be 4 core. It should have uh, two 10 gigabit interfaces and uh, one for one, one for LAN, and some are two and a half gig interfaces. It should be able to handle 5G, so we are planning for internal USB 3 port. It should come. Uh, from factory with Wi-Fi 6 already. And one thing that we are playing with is display instead of LEDs. What you can see down there is uh, our design prototype. As it will be more powerful, it will have more RAM, it will have faster interfaces, it will actually uh, use more power and would need better cooling. We want to have it done with passive cooling, so you wouldn't be bothered by some active ventilators. Um, other thing that you can see on the pictures is that uh, there will be plenty of antennas because uh, Wi-Fi 6 4 times 4 means 4 antennas. If we add 5G, it will be another 4 antennas, so we are at 8 total antennas if we use duplexers as we do in current design so we would share some of those antennas now what we plan to use the display for in Omnia one of the cool features was uh, RGB LEDs so you could uh, define various states and distinguish between uh, port states by color and uh, define your own alerts with uh, RGB LEDs. With uh, display, we can provide you much more information. And also, if we implement the support for the display in rescue mode, it will be much more convenient to browse through various uh, rescue features. For example, as we heavily use snapshots for your backups, now, in rescue mode, you will have an option to select the snapshot that you want and browse the snapshot history and see for yourself and decide what you want to do in rescue mode. We have uh, some ways to uh, switch between various rescue modes even now in our rescue system. We are using it on Twist mocks, but the feedback that we got is that it's uh, too geeky for average user. So we came up with the idea of using display and uh, simple buttons. That's what we are playing with right now. We don't have a prototype of the hardware yet. We are in the design phase, so our hardware engineers are still going through the documentation of the SOC. 
they are drawing uh, schematics and deciding how to put everything on PCB. Uh, so the thing that I'm showing uh, here is uh, just the case that we believe the final prototype will fit in. And inside we currently have a standard Omnia board that is driving everything. So anything can change, but uh, this is uh, where we think we are heading right now. So hopefully you will like new Tris Omnia 2 as well as you like the previous one. Thank you for your attention.